Hello everyone. In this session, we will understand ASP.NET inbuilt login control. Okay, and I hope you had done session management and cookies. And based on that, we can understand that how we can use this login control. Okay, so if you haven't uh, done this session, then please go through those video and then uh, you know just understand it and then come back here to understand inbuilt login control. So to use this uh, the inbuilt uh, login control, there are two ways. One thing you can do is you can map or you can embed the database with with this login control. You create a user there and map it with this inbuilt login control. This is the way. Okay. I mean you can program it. Okay. You can program it with the ADA.NET and and map it with your inbuilt login control. This is the one way. Other way is to you know just uh, use the inbuilt configuration of this Visual Studio. There is inbuilt uh, configuration of ASP.NET here. You create the user there and then can play around with inbuilt control. Okay, and I, I try my best to give you both idea. But uh, if I go with coding, all coding, then it'll be going to be a very long, long a lengthy video and uh, going to be a very longer session for me. Okay, so what I did is I have almost uh, I think five control like login, login view, login name, create user wizard password recovery change password these are all control of inbuilt login control okay so what i did is uh, to program to program this i had used only one okay so login control I, i'm going to show you the login control how you can program it with your database application okay so that i'll show you with coding but the other controls like create user wizard change password password recovery and other stuff are going to be like uh, I'm going to use the inbuilt configuration of this Visual Studio. Okay, so you'll see what I uh, what I'm going to do. So uh, the first thing is I already had created one database uh, database.mdf. So um, because I'm, I'm I'm getting some errors, so I already had created. I just you know I just um, add this. I haven't created any table or like that. So don't worry, I'll do it in this session only. So now the other thing what i need is i need a web form so add new item and i will take web form here and i will uh, give a name uh, such as login.astx and uh, i'll change the font here so this is big and uh, the other thing that i need is another form so this form is going to be uh, home.aspx okay so this is your home page and the, the page that I earlier, earlier had created is login.aspx. Understood? So I'm going to create here login controls and then when user get login, then he is going to redirect in this home.aspx. Okay. So let me just go to the design part and uh, uh, I actually need only this. So you can find this inbuilt login control in the toolbox with the help of control alter x you can this is the shortcut for opening this toolbox and you, you can get this login tab here and if you expand this login tab you will find this inbuilt login control so we have pointer um, which is i mean it is not very useful like it just changed the, the, this cursor okay so we have this change password create user wizard for register user then we have login we have login name we have login status we have login view and password these are the these are the inbuilt controls that i can use here in this in this tutorial okay i hope you will understand it so the first control that i'm going to show you so i'm going to show you this login control with with the with the coding okay so i'll drag and drop here so this you can see this is this is the login um, it is giving you the um, the same the same um, uh, i mean the same customization that you do in your html page so it is it is inbuilt you just have to drag and drop so we will change some of the properties of uh, this uh, login control so i'm going to open the property you can go by right clicking in property or either you can uh, press f4 to open the property window so what i need is i need uh, one thing i need is i need to provide the instruction so you find the instruction text here so it is here instruction text can you see so i'm going to i'm going to provide the text here so i'll say enter your username and password to login so this is going to be my uh, so you can see here i'm going to uh, so this 
n is not provided so i'm going to end so you can see here it is the instructed has been instruction has been shown over here you can see the other thing that i need here is i need uh, <coughs> one uh, one method that is on authenticate so when user is being authenticated then I, I want to generate that method okay and the method name is on authenticate so what you can do is you can find the this event event um, the, the, the bar and you click on that and you will find this authenticate um, authenticate event okay and you double click it so it will generate login underscore authenticate method and now you will code this uh, login authenticate so I'll just 150 so that you can view it so again get back to login.aspx I'll go to the source and you can see that I had generated an event on authenticate so it will check uh, when you uh, when you run in the Firefox it will check the check that the user is authenticate or not okay if it is authenticate then it will uh, work around and if it is not then the possible error is going to be shown uh, <clears throat> next thing is uh, I, I had created already this database.mdf that is my database so I'm going to create the table first so I'll go to this table add new table and I'll provide user username uh, that is varchar and I'll say you pass again varchar okay and uh, so other thing is I'm going to close this also oh, um, I have to save it so I'll give the name tbill underscore data and then I'll provide some you can find here so tbill underscore data and these are the uname and password so this is username and this is password so I'm going to say show table data and I'm and I'm going to create one user here a dummy user uh, with username and password so I'll say admin and the password is one two three okay so this is my user so this user can be it can be created with this with this inbuilt uh, uh, in build configuration of this visual story you can create it manually too oh, sorry automatically too this is this is a manual manual method that i'm and i'm doing okay so i had created one user that the username is admin and 123 is the password so i have this table here right now so now what i'm going to do is uh, so i already have this login login uh, control here and i have this login.aspx.cs and i have a method login underscore authenticate method okay and i'm going to code here to validate or to authenticate my user so <clears throat> I need a method here in the authenticate function so I'll say if and the method name is validation validate validate user so this is the method and I'll say uh, login one that is my control that login one is the control name the inbuilt control okay so login one is the is the ID of that login one dot username and I'll say and I'm passing the argument here so login one dot password so these are the two parameters that I'm passing over here for the function this for the function validate user okay and I have to create this validate user so what you can do is you can you can press you can put your cursor in this validate user press alter enter and it, it will it will oh it is not showing me uh, okay Or sometimes it doesn't show you the uh, the the inbuilt intelligence however you can create this validate user here in this part okay so first of all if validate user and I'm passing two arguments login one dot username login one dot password uh, then if the user is validated or authenticated then what you can do is you can redirect it response dot <coughs> redirect to the to the other page and what is the page that if the user is authenticated then I want to redirect it to the home.aspx so I'm going to pass home.aspx <clears throat> make sure you uh, provide the same home the, the same name uh, that you are providing here in this web form okay so home.aspx if the if the user is not authenticated then what you can do is you just say e dot E is this authenticate event argus this is the this is the um, variable e so I'll say e dot <coughs> authenticated equals to false okay so this is the thing now I have to create this uh, validate user so uh, this is this validate user function is going to be a, a boolean function okay so I have to create that and uh, I'll go here and I'll say private 
bool the data type of this function validate so i'll just copy here in case if i go wrong so this is the validate user function and i'm passing the two argument that it needs so i'll say string uh, string and the other name is username and the string password okay so these are the two parameters that i had provided here and the same parameters i'm passing over here okay next thing is <coughs> And now I gonna code here so make sure that this is the boolean uh, you know the boolean function so it is going to return something right so you can see here the error is because because we, ha we haven't uh, provide the return uh, keyword here so that's why the error is coming but however in the last part of the when you go line by line with the coding you will see that we have to return something so the error is nothing but it says that I need a return value so I'll provide the return value in the in the end okay so <clears throat> first thing first so i need three parameters to provide here so first parameter is, is the status of my user so i'm uh, i'm doing with the help of a boolean so bool status and the other thing is i need the u name that i want to pass it to the other page uh, with the help of session so string uh, string you oh, i can pass it in the same line but that's okay your name and the password so okay the next thing is i hope you understand the uh, i hope you had done ad.net so the next step that i'm that i'm going to provide here is the ad.net steps so the first step of ad.net is to sql uh, connection uh, uh, the class you have to create the connection string right so to use the connection string i need namespace so what i'm gonna do is i'm providing namespace here using system.data.sql client this is the namespace that sql connection string needs here so I'm, I'm separating here out sql connection con equals to new sql connection and you know that this sql connection needs here there are two overload methods the first is by default there is nothing but the second overload method needs a string connection string so i need a string here the connection string the in the in the string format so how can i provide this connection string by go to your database right click to it and uh, it will take some time and go to the properties or otherwise you can directly press f4 and it will open the property window and you can see there is this connection string and it is in the string format so i will just uh, double click it i'll copy it i close it and i will provide this in double quotes and this is my connection string however it will give you some errors so to resolve this error first of all it, it, they are single uh, the slashes uh, .NET doesn't support it, so I'll just provide at the rate. Now uh, you can. This is a verbatim string. This at the rate. I think this is the at the rate is, is the other name verbatim string. Okay. So other thing is uh, you from database .mdf you take all these things and remove it <coughs> and just say data directory so that you know the the whole path has been stored inside this data directory so that your visual studio gonna understand that i need a path and that path has been stored in data directory and you remove this double quotes from here and this is your connection string okay i hope you understand it the next step that it needs is sql command cmd equals to new sql command and i'm going to say the command name is select star this is not a complex query so i'm just select star from tbl underscore data and if you remember see this is the third overload method it needs sql connection so i already had provided the string command so this is your string command the sql query and the other thing it needs is the is the object of your class sql connection so what is the object con so i'm going to provide con here okay so this is the sql command the next step it needs is sql data adapter sda equals to new sql data adapter and if you see the the second parameter of this uh, sorry sec second um, uh, method of this sql data adapter it needs sql command select command so it needs the command object so sql command object what is the uh, what is the object of sql command cmd so i'm going to provide here cmd here and that's it i'm so sorry okay and the next step is i need data table or either data set but uh, it is good to uh, go with data set so i'm going to go with data set and if i click here data set you will see that it is not going to show you in the intellisense so what you can do it needs a namespace namespace as 
using system dot data. So I'm going to provide using system dot data. So once I use that namespace using system dot data, now you can see I can access data set. So data set ds equals to new data set and uh, then I'm going to use fill function sda dot fill and what I want to fill I will provide this object of data set it is okay it is asking me now the next step generally if you bind the grid view then you generally use uh, a grid view dot data bind function but uh, however we we are not using this ada.net for binding purpose here we need to log in right so how this this aspx.c is going to understand that uh, or know that where is your username and password so i have to provide uh, i have to provide something um, something common so that dot aspx.cs can understand that from where exactly my username and password can i take so one thing is i am providing tbl underscore data but where in tbl underscore data what column i need okay so what column i need uh, to provide uh, username and password so i have to explicitly i have to explicitly have to provide uh, in aspx.cs that this column i need for username and password so um, it just like uh, it just like the find control uh, uh, when you are dealing with uh, crude crude operations uh, for uh, grid view okay where there you have to find the uh, text box uh, for update for delete with the help of find control uh, method okay so the same thing we are doing over here so i'll say i had already uh, uh, i'll already had used this string use u name and pass so i'm going to use that so i'll say u name and this u name is going to store something so i'll do what i do what i'm gonna do is i'll say i'll use a ds this okay so right now this ds is holding everything from tbl underscore data okay so the all pr property of tbl underscore data that is the column the uh, the dummy data the row everything is inside this ds right now okay because we mapped this we filled it okay so i can use this ds so i'm i'm, I'm gonna say ds dot tables okay and what table so this is the first table the table data set is the set of uh, you know data table okay it is having collections of tables so what table i need i need the table first so tv uh, tables uh, zero zero at zero index whatever the table is there please provide me provide me so tables zero and then i'll say inside the table underscore data at what column so if i'm say if i'm if i'm saying table zero then it is nothing but table underscore data but inside that table underscore data what row what row should you, what row you need so i'm going to say i need rows zero okay and why i'm saying row zero because if you see the uh, the table definition of table underscore data then your u name is at zero index then you pass uh, is also uh, no sorry i need show table data not this one but show table data not this and i don't need this table definition but instead i need uh, show table data if you see the the column is this zero and the column of password is one however the they are in the same row so this is zero okay i need this user at index zero i need this user okay and then row zero uh, i need to provide the data column name you can see here it in, in the intellisense in the tooltip it is showing you that it needs data column here so i'm going to provide here uh, what column I need you can see here you name I want to provide so I'll say you name and then the two string so this is for the username and I'm going to save this whole thing okay so whatever the username that I'm I'm, I'm coming uh, I'm getting here so username admin is going to come over here so I'm going to save inside a variable and the variable name is string you name you can also write here string but I already had created the same name here okay so both thing is going to work so the same thing i have to provide uh, for password so i'll just say the row is going to be same right so both admin and uh, sorry username and password are on the same row so row is going to be the same so the thing that is going to change is the this u password column name okay and uh, i'll say pass this is it right so next thing is 
if I'm getting the username and password here, so let's say admin and one, two, three, then what I want, I want that the, the, I want now session. I want to check first of all that the username that I'm providing here inside this application and the, in the database, the, the, those username and passwords are same or not. Okay. So I'm going to check it. So I can check is with the help of, <coughs> I'll say you name, uh, <coughs> that I'm getting from the string you name, the, the, this you name, you name is equals to the username that is the authenticate username that, that you are providing over here in the validate user, uh, sorry, this one string username, the, those are similar or not. So equal, equal, actually, I almost always forget. So username and your password. So pass equal equals password. equal equal password okay if both of these are thing same then I, I need that uh, the username is, is is to be saved inside one session so that I can pass that username onto the home dot ASPX page so I'm going to use one session so I'll say session and session needs the parameter username so this is the username and uh, I will say it is coming from you name okay so this you name is having the uh, you know the application username that you are providing so I'm saving inside one session the session name is username and this this basic string this string username I'm going to pass it to the home dot ASPX okay so that if the user is validated or authenticated then it is if it is right or validated or authenticated then it is going to be redirect to the home dot ASPX with the help of this string username uh, variable okay this session so uh, that means if my username and password are correct then I need to say the status that I had provided in the boolean it should be true right so this is it and if the things are pretty much wrong then in the else condition I'm going to say the status the status is to be false and if you remember as I told you that your validate user needs the boolean right it needs it is a boolean function so my boolean function definitely needs something in return and what return thing I can provide I can provide the status so if your user is authenticated then status is going to be true then this status this return statement is going to hold true in boolean and it is going to provide over here and if it is true then it is redirect to home.aspx if it is false from the else status equals to false then this return is going to be false it comes over here and it comes over here if it is false then the authenticated equals to false it is not going to redirect okay i hope you are getting it so for uh, for login.aspx and .aspx is been completely done the other thing that i would i have to provide over here this is home.aspx so I'm going to double click and uh, what I can do here I need one control so I'll say control alter X and I just uh, you know I just pass label over here so this is my label and I will go to home.aspx.cs and here I'll just change the font and I have to provide something so if you remember that I had created one session here uh, the session name is username so in the page load event uh, I'll say if my session and you can see it needs it ask for uh, the index so uh, that is the same index that I have to provide the username if you remember username that I had if, if your username is not equals to null so if it is not equals to null if it is not providing you then what you can do is you can say label one that you had that you had taken label one dot txt and then you just pass it like this hey there or you can say welcome or like that anything that you anything that uh, the message that you want to provide and say session and what session in index you having you having username right so username you can also remove this if if condition but however it is just for the checking that if the user is providing any username and username or not in the login.aspx so if it is not then it is not going to uh, you know come in this section it is, it is directly goes into the else condition right so session username and then i say dot to string and if the 
if the session is wrong somehow if it is not there then what I can do I can do is response dot redirect I can redirect it to again in the login dot ASPX okay so this ends your coding part the complete coding part one thing I have to provide here is web.config I have to do something uh, for my web.configuration file and uh, actually in the web.config part I actually have this and website uh, one dot solution I had created one web.config file uh, the same thing I just I'll just copy it uh, I need this app settings I almost forget this so what I can do is I I will copy it and I'm going to paste here so uh, I need to uh, use this app settings and this app setting is having on obtrusive validation mode well basically what it does is uh, this is basically by the way this is a, Java, a jQuery um, or you can say JavaScript so what it does it minimizes your validation so uh, val validation so all these validations in the login.aspx are based on JavaScript right uh, the the backend code for login control has been written in JavaScript so if uh, if I'm not using this app uh, settings then what will happen if you so see the wedge uh, sorry uh, view page source if you see then if you are not providing this then uh, in if you see the view page source then all the JavaScript that you had used it is going to show inside that page okay when whenever whenever it renders uh, the page so uh, so if I'm go over here and if I uh, view page source then the uh, JavaScript of that validation the whole uh, whole val uh, validation that you had used uh, in the login it, it is going to show it is going to show over here like this okay like this however if you use this obtrusive validation mode if you if you provide it okay if you make it true or if you provide it here in the web.config then it is not going to then it is not going to show in, uh, uh, this script okay then it is not going to uh, show the script and uh, you can check this uh, resource of codeguru.com then you can see that uh, it is using on obtrusive validation so if you are using if you are not using it then all this you can see this script and it is having all these validation required field uh, form uh, I'm sorry required field uh, required field. all these are required field, basically so it is showing you the script of that validation met method right so but if you are using obtrusive uh, this obtrusive validation mode then you can see here it is not going to show me any script it is just going to uh, show me the uh, the spend class inside that I'm using control to validate and uh, required field it is not going to show me the the javascript okay it is not going to show me this whole bunch of thing it is just giving me the the actual uh, thing that i had used i hope you are getting it uh, so uh, this is the thing that i had provided so now if i try to run this um, i'll try to run this i hope it will work so let's see So uh, what it says, um, website three dot. Uh, let me just. Oh, I'm so sorry. Web dot config runs. So I need this login dot aspx to be run. So just. So now you will see that login uh, dot aspx is going to be loaded here, and uh, this is the instruction method. I actually have to false this. I have to make this uh, disable. Remember me next time. You can do it by going to property and just uh, disable it okay so you can see if I say admin 1 and this is not actually the user that I had created but I'm just putting the validations that so uh, so if I remove the password you can see if I if I click on this login uh, button then it will show me the validation required field validator that is what I'm saying uh, this login control has the all validation okay I am not creating any validation here. it is inbuilt inside this login control and those validation those required field range field all those uh, validations are in JavaScript so if you go to the uh, view page source then it is going to show you that uh, I am using the you know uh, the JavaScript of that uh, that uh, required field uh, range field all these but instead if I am using that uh, obtrusive validation mode then it is not going to uh, uh not going to show me the, the script or javascript of that okay so you can see it is it is inbuilt with the uh, validation method so now if i am go with admin and i say one two three and when i click login then you will see that i am on the page 
home.aspx with hey there admin and this is my username that I had provided in the session. So this is the one one control from uh, from the uh, from the login inbuilt control and I had, I had shown you this login with adio.net that how you can how you can create it and how you can uh, map up with your uh, control. Thank you so much for listening to me. So um, in the previous session, I had shown you this login.aspx. Um, by creating one database and one user and then we play around right now in this session I'm going to create one user uh, with the help of uh, ASP.NET web configuration okay the inbuilt function of this Visual Studio I'm going to create one user here and I'm going to play with these you know um, the maximum controls from this login uh, panel okay so for that I have to create one new application so I'm going to say web application empty website and login and uh, I need a web form so I'll say the first web form I need here is my login and another one is for home.aspx the same okay so home.aspx so I uh, come back to this uh, login.aspx. I will change the font 150, and uh, now you will see that uh, in the design section, I'm so I'm I'm not I'm not going to create any design here. Uh, it is going to be the simplest uh, tutorial. Uh, so please bear with me that I'm not creating any design table like that. Okay, not coloring and stuff. So I had created login.aspx and home.aspx. And before going further with these controls, I'm going to, I have to create one user here. So uh, one way to do is you can do with the help of this web.config here. Okay. But uh, I'm going to close it because as I told you that I'm not going to code anything here. I'm going to do everything with automatic process or automatic configuration of this Visual Studio, right? So I'm going to go with this website here and we have this ASP.NET configuration, uh, this, this function. So I'm going to click here. Uh, so it will uh, open the Firefox and the page uh, uh, website administrator administration tool. So I will go with this security option and uh, if I already have any user there then I have to remove it. So you have to uh, click on this select authentication type and then I'll select and then provide from the internet and then press on this done button. And then you see I don't have any user existing user zero so you can create a user here so you create with the help of uh, this sign up a new account uh, you, you will say admin and then password is going to be now see uh, there is an inbuilt validation in this password so it needs alphanumeric and uh, the, the uh, you know whatever the complex password you can create you have to create here so I'm going to say P A W -S, S uh, let me say P A W -S, S W O R D and I'll say at the rate okay so if I don't provide this at the rate or any alphanumeric then it is going to show me the error that the password password should uh, the password should be having minimum seven characters one alphanumeric like that okay so uh, in the confirm password I'll say P A W S W O R D and at the rate I think I had done something wrong here in the password section so P A W S W O R D at the rate and I'll say P A W S W O R D at the rate okay and the password is same now and the email is uh, admin at the rate what what I can say admin at the rate gmail.com because I don't have any email server so I am just providing the dummy email here security question is going to be like favorite spot sport I already had done this that's why it is going to show me these options favorite sport and the option is cricket uh, so the cricket is not the option but so I'm creating user here so this is the user so complete your account has successfully created continue and if you go with home here and you can see here existing user one so I have right now one user so this user is going to help me uh, in in, uh, in in these in in, in understanding uh, these uh, these controls okay so now I will drag and drop this login control here so this is the login control as I told you okay and we will see the properties here so I press F4 and the first thing I am going to remove this remember me next time um, and I think um, display remember me you can make it 
false and it has been gone second thing is you can go with the property name destination page url so what do you mean by destination page url basically if a user if the username and password is right and user press login then where i want to redirect the user so for redirection i have this home.espx so find this destination page url press here on this this small end button and you will find these uh, web form whatever the web form you had created so i had created home.espx i'm going to click it so user is now going to redirect to home.espx if the user is is the user is the authenticate user okay and this is this you can play around with this uh, login control uh, you can you can change the orientation of it um, like you can go for vertical on horizontal right now it is in the vertical orientation so you can change it to horizontal i'll show you if i can see this orientation is vertical right now you can change into horizontal and it looks like this so i don't think it is it looks good um, maybe it looks good okay okay so i had did this now I will going to uh, you know I'll, I'm, I'm going to uh, what I can say I can I will run it and uh, so when I run it control F5 open the Firefox and it will show you the uh, the login form here it's still in the vertical format right okay so you can see I had created that user admin right remember so I'll say here I'll say this is login dot by the way so I'll say admin and the password is p-a-s-s-w-o-r-d and at the rate when I say login, you can see that I, I, I come back, I come to home.aspx. So if my user is, is authenticated, so I'm redirect to home.aspx, right? So in a way, if my user is not authenticated, so if I say admin one, admin one is not available right now, right? So if I say password is one, two, three, when I hit login, you will see that there is, uh, there is a validation or the authentication function your login attempt was not successful please try again because the user admin one is not available in the database uh, so it will not going to you know uh, work around right so this is your login control this is the first uh, uh, login control that you had seen right the second thing that we will understand that this create user wizard right so next we will understand this uh, create user wizard for that uh, i need to create one another web form so i'll say add new item and i'll say web form and i will change the name to register dot aspx right so i don't need to this increase the font but however i can do it okay so i'll drag and drop create user wizard so you, you can see this is a sign up for new account so there you had created one new user right uh, remember in the asp.net configuration you had created one new user now with the help of this sign up new account you can create another user in that in that uh, part only right so you had drag uh, create new create new user uh, sorry create user wizard and we will see some of the properties of it uh, so uh, one property that we had to see is press f4 and the property that you need to change is continue destination page url so find that so here we have um, continue destination page url there we go continue destination page url so what it says it says that um, if the user has been created successfully create user if it is successfully created then where you want to redirect the user so definitely i want to redirect it to the login.aspx again right so I'll press on this button and I'll say go to the login.aspx after the user is registered, right? So this is the property I, I have to uh, provide. And now when I run this application, when I run this, you will see that, uh, by the way, you can also, uh, I think you can change some of the, you, you can see there is an option called as auto format. You can change according to your styles whatever the style so let's say colorful is the thing that i want so i'll press f5 you will see the look and feel is going to be changed so i'm going to create another user here i'll say admin earlier admin one is not available so now admin one is going to available admin one and then password is going to be p a double s w o r d and double at the rate symbol so at the rate at the rate p a double s w o r d at the rate at the rate an email is going to be admin uh, admin one and security question again is going to be favorite sport and 
favorite sport is hockey by the way uh, my password is basically password at the rate at the rate but uh, let's say if i'm if i'm if i'm providing the you can see there are inbuilt uh, validation method available so if i say one two three only and one two three only and if i create the user it will not allow you you can see password length minimum is seven and non alpha alphanumeric character required one so that's why you can see here there are inbuilt validation method available so p a w s w o r d at the rate at the rate again p a w s w o r d at the rate at the rate i hope this is right and when i say create user you can see your account has been has been successfully created still we are in still we are on register.aspx but when i hit continue you will see that i am redirecting my the, my control to login.aspx see continue you can see i come back to login.aspx so the thing is you will see that i had created admin one so am i ready with that user or not so let let's log in with that username admin one and i'll say password uh password is going to be p a w s w o r t at the rate, at the rate. and when i hit okay you will see i'm going to redirect to login.aspx from from login.aspx to home.aspx so i'm successfully log in in my page home.aspx i come back and i come to my account okay so this is the way you can use this create user wizard right uh, next thing we're gonna understand is login name. So this login name is going to provide you the name on which you are logged in, right? So if I'm logged with admin, then this login name is going to show you the login name admin, right? So drag and drop uh, this login um, login name inside where in home.aspx. Huh? I'm dragging it here. So I'm going to say here. I actually have to say welcome user and then i am going to drag and drop this login name right so just a space and then right so now welcome user and the username is going to be shown over here so when i run this you will see so let's say now in the oh actually i need to uh, i need to run this login.aspx i almost forgot it so um, actually I have to I actually need to change this too so it doesn't look good right so press F4 and the orientation is going to be uh, vertical again by the way you can change all these color and stuff you can see back color water color there are many options available inside uh, for uh, for theming this login control right and again i'm going to auto format it so it looks good colorful i think it looks good but classic is also good okay so now when i'm going to run this okay so i'm running with admin uh, and then i'll say p a w s w 0 r d at the rate and i say login you will see that home.aspx now giving me admin okay this is the username i'm logged with so if I say if I'm if I'm again uh, if I open this login.aspx and now I'm um, uh, I'm login with admin one. So if I say admin one and say p a w s w o r d and at the rate at the rate and log in, you will see that I am login with welcome user admin one. You can see okay, so it is working uh, working fine. Okay. And now uh, let's say I'm going to uh, drag and drop this login status, and login status is going to is is going to show you that uh, that I am a log. It will give you the option called as log in and log out, right? It's going to show you uh, those options. So I'm going to drag and drop this um, this login status inside my home dot aspx again. So what I'm going to do is I'll just tab it little actually i can i can use a table here and then you know drag and drop that login status inside the column two of that table but however i haven't used it so um look and fill is not going to uh, you know not give you the best option so you're having login one right now uh, uh, some of the uh, property i need to change here so press f4 and then the first property that you need to uh, change is logout action okay so what you want to do after the user log out from the session right 
so find the property log out action and you can see it is referring there are three options refresh redirect or log redirect to login page so i'm going to change to redirect whatever the page you are providing it will re redirect that home.aspx okay so next thing is after the user get logged out which page you want to redirect so i'll say uh, the option is log out page URL. So this is log out page URL. So where you want to uh, redirect the user after the user get log out again login.aspx right. So login.aspx and so now let's run this. So I'm going to run this login.aspx and again uh, I'm going to log in with admin and paswrd at the rate. And I when, when I say uh, log in you will see that I am welcome user admin and there is an option log out right so when I press on this log out button I'm again going to redirect to login.aspx see and you, there you go login.aspx right so this is the this is the login status and now uh, login view is basically give you that you are login or not uh, is the same uh, functionality as login status uh, so that's why I'm not using login view However, I'm going to use this change password. Now, uh, change password for that I need to create another page. So I will say change password. Okay, so this is change password, and I'm going to drag and drop this change password here. So this is the change password functionality. You can see this is looking great, and uh, I will just increase the size in case. Okay. So, uh, what uh, property you need to change here? So, press F4, and the property that you need to change is again you need to find continue destination uh, page URL. So, I'm going to find this uh, continue destination page URL. So, uh, after change password, where you want to uh, redirect the user? Definitely on the login.aspx. So, I'll press on this login.aspx so after the user after the user change its password the user is going to redirect again to login.aspx to log in right so i'm going to change it uh, next thing is uh, display username so where is it um, here it is false actually you can make it true and why i'm using it is uh, your uh, change password control doesn't know uh, whose password you need to change right so that's why i had just uh, changed the uh, username from false to true so when i going to run this change password you will see when i press f5 and i'm going to run this change password so username for admin i want to change the password so the earlier password was p a w s w o r d at the rate and now my password is going to be changed as admin at the rate at the rate okay admin admin at the rate at the rate and say change password you will see your password has been changed so when i hit on this continue button you will see that change password.aspx is going to change to login.aspx so i can again log in continue and the password i changed is for admin and my earlier password was password zero you will see if i say sorry password at the rate so if i use that p a w s w o r d at the rate when i say login you will see that your login attempt was not successful please, please try again because my password has been changed to admin at the rate at the rate i think this is the password if i'm not wrong so you can see welcome user admin and log out again so this functionality is also uh, works properly so these are your you know the control for inbuilt uh, uh, login and you had seen many of it now uh, one thing is we have this password recovery however i actually this is actually not very hard you just drag and drop here you will see it says username so um, what it gonna do is um, it will ask you the username to whom you want the password so if i say admin here it will ask you the security question like favorite sport and i'll say hockey then when i hit this submit button what it gonna do is it will it will ask you the mail okay the mail that you had provided in the authenticate user so if i go with this asp.net configuration here and security and so i have this uh, so here uh, we have edit user see i have this admin at the rate gmail.com this is a dummy email right so when you use this password recovery then the password uh, 
that you are uh, that it provide you this uh, this 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 control is going to mail to this admin at the rate gmail.com however this mail is not gonna work right because this is not the mail this is not a working mail for this to to work this to work with this email i need uh, i need to set up a mail server in web.config i need to set up that i need that ip address the host and also i need uh, the uh, port and the mail server so i don't have it that's why i cannot use this this password recovery functionality however you, if you can find a very a good article on that so i'll say password uh, and uh, i think this is the one yeah this is the one so if you if you find this uh, I'll, I'll zoom it out for you I'm actually this is not gonna zoom um, i will magnify it uh, so take uh, this this url asp.net uh, suresh.com and this is the link so please find it out uh, this link and inside this you will see that he had done this so this is the delivery method of this uh, mail setting so inside the mail setting uh, there is this url uh, sorry the mail administrate the rate asp.net so, so this is the mail that he had uh, that he had used and this is the ip address the host and the port number so after that your password recovery is going to work and there is a there is a demo for that you can see here can you find username and he submit and it is uh, so sorry he is taking the username so this is the username and submit button then it will ask you the favorite uh, sorry the question that you had seen uh, uh, favorite sport uh, so i'll say hockey and then it will uh, it will give you the password and it will mail it to the uh, your mail server so administrate at the asp.net and this is your username and this is the password the new the new password okay so in this way this password recovery is going to work please check out this this blog this is a very useful blog here uh, so password recovery you can please check out that blog i don't have the mail settings right now so i cannot show you okay almost you had done uh, um, um, for the, from this login control if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section and thank you so much for listening to me okay